Welcome to Esports Hero Cafe, where we talk about any and all esports. I'm your host, Bowman Shota, and today we have a very special guest with us. We have Adrian P. Uh, from Video Game Cartel. Um, how's it going, Adrian? Hey, how you doing, man? Doing great over here. Good, good. Um, now, you have a website um, that's launching called Video Game Cartel. Um, give us a little background on what that company does, and also a little background on, on your history in esports. Well, um, Video Game Cartel is a site that helps gamers, uh, esport athletes, esport organizations uh, learn how to better prepare for the new and up and coming esports atmosphere. Uh, we offer e learning classes and courses that teach gamers, let's say, how to properly brand themselves, how to um, manage their money, taxes, how to. Uh, actually go and build a business plan for their esports e team, uh, sponsorships, uh, everything that a lot of people want to know, just don't have the know-how or, you know, the mindset to find on their own, kind of crossing over uh, esports and business a lot more than the typical website does. Biggest reason I'm very excited to have you on the show is because I don't know if there's been kind of a theme going with this show as far as trying to help esports grow in a lot of not the most traditional ways. Like, obviously, you know, we talk about practice and coaching and stuff, but we've talked about physicality. We've talked about the collegiate side, about starting a new org. Um, that's why I'm excited. And the title of this video is called uh, Selling Yourself because your company, from what I understand, teaches all those other skills that, you know, an 18, 20, 19, 20 year old player probably doesn't have and when they become a pro you know they're they're they might be a little bit like a babe in the woods a little bit as far as some exactly. of these things like managing money P pr all that stuff um so you know what what are and your you know what do you see as the common struggles that a player faces outside the game well one of the biggest things I've, I've noticed at least is uh either brand management money management mm-hmm or just uh, media acumen. Like, they just don't know how to speak mm. to the media. Yeah. Uh, we have issues where a lot of people, players are saying things that they don't realize makes either their sponsors look bad or they make their organization look bad. Uh, one, one of my biggest influences when it came to my site is uh, the NFL has this thing called the, the Rookie Symporium. Okay. It's where they every rookie, doesn't matter what team you're on, is when you get signed, you have to go to this like weekend retreat. And this retreat, you're locked into a hotel, basically. They have security guards outside. You can't go out and party or anything like that. You're stuck there. Mm -hmm. And during this like weekend long symposium, you're you're taught the things that you're gonna encounter as an NFL player. Uh, a lot of pros don't realize that your life is gonna change with with the money, with the fame your whole life is going to change. All eyes are on you. You're going to be scrutinized. Your past will be, you know, everything's online. So your tweets are going to be scrutinized and scrubbed through. So you have to prepare and know how to react to some of these things that are going to come up. So, and that's that's the biggest the biggest thing that kind of influenced us to say, hey, uh, players need to know this type of stuff. So Nice, nice. Um, so, like, kind of give a, can you cover, like, kind of the structure of, like say over a, like a first month period, like what type of uh, classes and how long do they take in your in your in your program that you have? Well, the other classes are on on demand basically. Oh, okay. uh, so it's it's at your own your own pace. So uh, I worked with a couple of uh, sports management teams and groups to get everything developed. So one of our major ones is like social media. Mm -hmm. uh, one in that class, they teach you how to actually. Present yourself on social media, present your your brand, present yourself, and still keep your your identity. A lot of people feel that, okay, well, they have a sponsor that they have to kind of push their product, that they're sellouts, and they have to sell out for the sponsor. Uh, you know, I, I love G Fuel as much as everybody else, but I've seen some people that have posted, you know, G Fuel Life, G Fuel, you know, completely changing who they are for a sponsor. And that's not typically the case that you have to do it. It has to come off organically or it seems forced. And that's what the sponsors are actually looking for. So uh, those are the type of things uh, they kind of look for. 
uh, another one that we might have uh, that, uh, excuse me, is uh, Brandon. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that they just come out, they're just going to have to play games, go back into their room, play more games, practice with the team, uh, come out for tournaments, do a couple of Twitch streams, and everything's good. But there's a lot more to it that could make not just yourself, but the team get more exposure, make more money. Uh, and that all comes along from branding. If they, if a company doesn't see you as a sellable entity, mm-hmm. they're not going to try to promote you or sell you at all. So those are the, kind of the two main things that uh, we like to push, at least as a standard. Nice, nice. Now, so obviously you talked about, you know, how teams force, uh, not force, but require the rookies in the NFL to, to take this symposium uh, or the retreat, as you called it. Um, yeah. Should esports teams and the organizations um, look towards a company like yours as far as like all new players they bring onto the team, make sure they go through some required classes? I mean, like, um, do you think that would be a huge impact as far as the scene goes? Yeah, definitely. Especially if um, one of our courses that we offer is, uh, you know, the basics of like League of Legends, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of sounds stupid to some point. Like, you know, why would a pro player need the basics? A course on just the basics, learning how to push middle lane, how to different techniques, you know, how to defend against certain characters. Uh, but as long as everybody is on the same page uh, as a team, they know everyone knows that this person knows the, the vocabulary, uh, knows the different terms, different the basic techniques. Everyone's on the same page, then they work better as a cohesive unit. And that's the, basically the thing: is that everyone knows the same thing, everyone's able to help each other everyone is cohesive so uh making sure that everyone knows that hey you shouldn't tweet that you know holding each other accountable if everyone on the team took that social media class you know one person might tweet them like hey delete that that's not a good look you know hurry up uh or another person might say hey you know just make sure you're up for practice it's a it's just a whole synergy thing that goes on when you take these classes with your teammates so I, I definitely feel that it might be in the future a requirement for for everybody. Just like once once esports gets to the point where there's one unified body, just like the NFL is the the organization for football. Yeah. Once there's a unified organization just for league or a unified organization just for Dota two or you know uh, maybe even just one big umbrella for all esports, it's it's gonna be the the main requirement and it will help in the long run. 